I want to welcome everybody to Medagogy.com. I'm your host, your moderator, Dr. Lauren Brown. I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine in Vancouver, BC, Canada. My clinic is called AccuBalance. And today our topic is um, adrenal fatigue, um, restoring the healthy adrenal function. Our presenter is Dr. Daniel Kalish. And um, I'm really excited about this. I got to give you a little bit of history behind, um, behind Dan. Many years ago, and I don't even know if he knows this story, but many years ago I was walking in California and I came across a, a shop that I really liked. It had um, dresses in it and the back had all these great uh, books. And one of the books was this book, Your Guide to Healthy Hormones. Um, I read the book. I really enjoyed it. The author's name doesn't stick to my head. Just a hint, it's Dr. Dan Kalish, though. <laughs> and uh, months go by, years go by, and then um, I see on Dr. Mercola's website a great interview by this Dr. Dan Kalish talking about the Kalish method. So then I go to his website, and I love his program that he has, and I think, wow, i got to have this guy on Metagogy and Pro-D. So I invite Dan to speak, which you can see he's doing. And I was talking about this book, and then I, as a fool, I realized it's his book. <laughs> and um, and then I later got his second book. So Dan is here on Metagogy, and it just shows you how important it is to share your thoughts and write books. Because I mean, this is the book that many years ago got me started on this functional medicine journey, and got me interested in having Dan Kalish come and speak to us today. If you want his official bio, please do go look at the Metagogy page or Pro D page. You can see his official bio and all his credentials. I will let you know that you're about to hear a great lecture on functional medicine. If you haven't downloaded the handouts already, please go to the Metagogy page that this is that you launched this uh, webinar from, and you can see the handouts there. Um, Dan has put together an incredible program. He calls it the Kalish Method, and he has a program where um, he can train you online to really work with a functional medicine approach. We have a few courses on Metagogy for free that you can watch. We have one called um, How to Diagnose and Resolve Heartburn, Reflux, and Stomach Pain and Nausea. And there's another one on how to solve al how to resolve or solve allergies with functional medicine. Plus, he has a 12-hour CEU approved course on Pro D seminars called Introducing Functional Medicine into Your Acupuncture Practice. So he's created a functional medicine program for acupuncturists. And if you like all that, then hopefully you'll check out his website because he has a very comprehensive. This is we're just showing you 12 hours. He's, he has many hours um, of interaction online where if you really want to learn how to use this functional medicine approach in your clinic, then he can help train you. So we're hoping you're going to get some really good clinical pearls for your practice and for the public that's, that's watching this. You're going to get some ideas and maybe some of your signs and symptoms. You'll see how they're related, for example, here to your adrenal. And you'll find out that there are practitioners that do this functional medicine approach or integrated approach, so functional medicine with acupuncture, that can help you relieve a lot of these symptoms. Having said that, I do need to remind you of the disclaimer here that the course here that you're about to listen to this lecture and the handouts contain general information about medical conditions and treatment. This information is not advice. It's not meant to be uh, used as treatment. Um, so please do seek out a healthcare provider um, for your health, health conditions. Throughout the webinar, if you're watching this as the live webinar, please post your questions. I'll moderate those and present those to Dan. If you're watching this as a recording and you have more questions for Dan, then again, send them through Metagogy or go directly to Dan Kalish's website, which we'll put up um, as well. So without any further ado, I give you Dr. Dan Kalish. Thank you very much, Lauren. And that's a funny story about the book. I didn't know that. That cracks me up. So anyways, um, Dr. Dan Kalish here. I'm super happy to be talking to you all about uh, testing the adrenal glands. And, you know, just a reminder, too, that none of this stuff is new. You know, I think uh, if you are a practitioner of Chinese medicine, acupuncture, uh, herbs, and whatever you may do, this information has been around for generations, thousands of years. You know, all we're doing is taking something and putting it into a slightly more modern context um, in terms of lab testing. But I know you all have you know, stress is a major component in, in all the practices that you work with. And I find that uh, the particular way that I approach functional medicine works really, really well with acupuncture practices. Um, I've been worked with a lot of different clinics over the years. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my background, what the adrenal glands are, how they get stressed, how we look at stress, you know, again in this Western model, and the relationship, and this is an interesting one, you know, to GI health, which is really, really critical. And we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you can start to fix these problems too, which is the important part. So I went to school, you know, I ended up with a bachelor's degree in physiological psychology and philosophy from Antioch College. 
Um, when I was doing that, I studied at Cambridge University. I was very ambitious as a younger person. I ended up going to chiropractic college. I've been in practice forever. You know, I'm at that stage of my career where I try to make it seem like I've been practiced less time than more time, but over 20 years, lots and lots of patients. And then I've got this like strange resume of things that happen to me all the time. Patrick Kennedy picked up the phone and called me a couple years ago. He invited me to this One Mind for Research program, Integrative Neurology. Go figure. I was trapped in a suite of rooms at a fancy hotel in Boston for three or four days with the 200 top neuroscientists in the world. I've worked with the Mayo Clinic, really interested in the Mayo Clinic practitioners. They've, a bunch of them taken my class. I work with them on a regular basis still. And even, um, you know, this wide range of people that are interested in this stuff, from Mayo Clinic to Mercola, trained Mercola's whole staff. We've got about 700 people that have gone through my training program now, you know, keeping ourselves busy. But when we go back in time, you know, this is me when I had a lot of hair, um, to my earlier clinic days, um, you know, I was not doing so well health-wise. And I had, you know, to go through a personal journey to fix my adrenal glands and my digestive problems and whatnot, that I really kind of launched my career in a sense and created a, a lot of the work that I teach now. So a lot of this is from personal experience and then from some really excellent training from a whole variety of functional medicine experts that really sort of took me under their wing and spent a lot of years working with me. So, you know, in terms of how we think about functional medicine itself, and there's a lot of different models for functional medicine, and what I try to do is just keep it as simple as humanly possible, because life, as you all know, is complicated enough as it is, right? So the, the idea here is that we have these different levels, and we have patients that are coming in under the symptomatic umbrella, where they're having symptoms and problems, and we have to, you know, you know, address that in some way, indirectly, hopefully. We have body systems that we're going to talk about, hormones, gut, detox, different systems, right? And then we have the underlying root causes, which is what we're trying to determine based on the labs. So the, the, I see the, the sort of uh, work that we have as practitioners is to translate for our patients who are suffering from symptoms this language of functional medicine, which is based on body systems and based on root causes. And, you know, people don't come in thinking that they have a root cause of a certain problem. They're coming in tired or depressed or fat, and we have to then, you know, try to solve that. And so years ago, I had an inspiration, which I get sporadically, and I thought, hey, office manager, why don't you please go out and get a whole year of every new patient charts, you know, pull the charts. This is back when we used paper, actually, and pull every new patient chart for the last year, and I want you to write down the top three complaints of every one of my new patients in the last year. And she was gracious enough to do this, and when the information came back on my desk, I realized that the vast majority, probably 90 plus percent of the patients that I was seeing, suffered from one of these five problems that's up on the board right now. And so this was a, sort of a breakthrough for me, just thinking wise, that I could categorize people in a way that most people that I was working with were either overweight, fatigued, depressed, had digestive problems, or female hormone problems. And so once I realized that was a, me a big component of my practice, I started to think about it. And you look around, and these are really, these, it wasn't a mistake that this, this happened. These five complaints lend themselves well to functional medicine protocols. They're very consistently, effectively addressed with functional medicine. You know, you're going to pretty much get all the people with these five problems improve, maybe not 100%, but significantly, you know. And, you know, it's going to make uh, your life easier to kind of have a niche where you can focus on things and not try to address everything under the sun with functional medicine, at least in the beginning when you're first getting started. And then the other beautiful thing about these big five um, symptoms is that they're not very well treated and oftentimes mistreated and made worse by conventional medicine. So what a really great niche for us, something that the competition, the conventional doctors don't do well on. In fact, they may make people worse usually for the treatments that they offer and something that we can do a great job on with functional medicine. And so again, it can be a very complex subject area, but if you break it down to these five chief complaints, it makes it so simple and then you can move on to the more complicated cases, you know, once you get more advanced in this work. So again, simplicity, we're looking at three body systems, the hormonal, digestive and detox systems. Lab tests for each symptom, each system, right? Gut testing, detox testing, hormone testing, boom, 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 right? It's very simple. There are a million gazillion different functional medicine tests you can do, but my mission really 
at this point in the way that my career has taken me is to stay with the really basic stuff and do the basic part of functional medicine really well. And if things get more complicated, then you can escalate. But we find, you know, now having trained so many hundreds of doctors that this model works really well for people who want to have a, you know, a, um, a low-tech, easy-to-run, financially successful, not emotionally draining practice, you know, to keep things simple here. So we're thinking about why all this works or how come this works? Why is this model, what makes this model sort of valid? We go back to a patient I talk about oh, almost every time I give a talk. This woman's name is Barbara. And um, Barbara came in and she had just, back in these days I was living down in San Diego and I had a practice down in San Diego. Barbara had just moved from Texas, um, rather imposing woman, came in the office, sat down and looked at me and said, I am fat, I am tired, I'm depressed. What are you going to do about it? And, you know, you know, you have these moments, these sort of epiphanies in practice where, uh, in this case, you're sort of scared into coming up with some kind of a response to what a patient is sort of demanding of you. And rather than being polite and really uh, deferential, as many patients are, she was maybe like more confrontational, like, yeah, you fixed all my girlfriends, but what are you going to do for me and why am I going to lay down all this money to treat you? And when Barbara sort of pushed me to that level, I... I realized I had to come up with a pretty good comeback. And during that like two or five or ten second interval between her comment and my comeback, this whole clinical model just gelled in my head, just boom, just happened. Sort of, I don't know, it wasn't really a vision, but it just kind of came to me. And this is what I teach now. It's a really great model. It works well. And it's totally predicated on everything that I had already learned. I actually didn't make any of this up. I just sort of synthesized it and created some really kind of colorful looking PowerPoints. But this is, to me, the heart and soul of functional medicine as I was taught functional medicine now uh, in a format that's easier to understand. Okay? So none of this is original. This is just my framing of it. Let's put it that way. How your body falls apart. We're under stress. What kind of stress? Emotional stress is the leading stress. Someone dies, there's a divorce, you have a baby, you have your third baby, right? You're working too hard. That stress pushes that first body system, the adrenals, to the max. Eventually, if the stress goes on for lo long enough, then the GI system starts to fall apart. Okay? And there's complicated reasons for that. We can talk about secretory IgA levels are lowered or upraised. You know, the gut basically wears out as we're under a lot of continued stress. Then all of a sudden, you have what we call leaky gut. You start to pick up pathogens, you're reacting to foods, all these different GI problems start to develop once you're in the stress pattern for long enough. And then eventually if the gut is generating enough badness in the world, it's going to dump a whole boatload of toxins onto the liver, the detox systems of the body start to crash. So this is a pretty consistent pattern. People are under a lot of stress, their GI falls apart, they get toxic. And what we're looking for with the labs is where in this process you're going to intervene, how bad is it, and what are we going to do about it, all right? So this is not true 100% of the time. Nothing is true 100% of the time. But this is a good enough model for us to base, you know, whole practices on. So then the epiphany part of this, because you can see that the model is pretty straightforward, right? The epiphany part for me, though, was that the model dictates the correction, right? So we're going to correct the body system in the order in which the problems occurred, which is a very, very ancient idea in all kinds of other med you know, systems of medicine, right? This is not new. It's just sort of a framing of it in functional medicine. We're going to test and correct the hormones and the GI tract and the detox systems in that order. You can do all the labs right away if you want, but when we do treatment protocols, we're very specific about starting with addressing the stress response, then fixing GI, and then detoxing the person at the end, which runs counter to a lot of ways that uh, programs are done, but you know, can get into detail later if you have specific questions about why that sequence is so important. But it turns out that I, I think the hallmarks of what I do that make it special in terms of functional medicine are that it's lab-based and that we have a really clear model that's sequenced out. So we're not trying to change it for every patient. So the heart and soul of this all starts with the adrenal hormones and how we respond to stress. So when we're under stress, we have the adrenal glands producing hormones like DHEA and cortisol, trying to regulate the stress response. Right? And to the extent that you have uh, a balance between these two hormones, you're going to be healthy and fit and relaxed and sleep well and have a great sex drive and all that. But if you're under a lot of stress, the hormone levels first shoot up. If that stress goes on for a long period of time, then the hormone levels drop lower and lower and lower and lower. So the initial stage of adrenal stress is high cortisol. Eventually, the levels drop more and more and more. And we get into these more advanced stages of adrenal fatigue. 